Hi, welcome back. So Allure announced their best of beauty winners and I'm going to try them out for myself. I don't have every, every single product on the list, but I have most of them and more than enough to create a full face. And I was looking at this list and it felt very sponsored, more so than past years, but I guess we'll talk about that later in the video. So before we get into it, I'd love for you to subscribe if you haven't already and let's get started. So starting off with primers, they have two on their list, a hydrating option and a matte option. The winner for hydrating was the Beauty Blender Boost Firming and Smoothing Peptide Primer. I haven't tried that one, but I have the mattifying version. This is the e.l.f. Cosmetics Liquid Poreless Putty Primer, and this is more up my alley for primers. I like picking primers that are either going to help the longevity of my makeup or that are going to blur my pores or make my skin a little bit more matte. I like things that you can't get from moisturizers. So I'm going to go for this one here. This was meant to be in a past roundup, but I accidentally put it in my drugstore bin, so I'm going to have to retry it. I don't remember my thoughts on this primer whatsoever. I'm going to take some, really work it into my hands first, kind of warm it up, and then I'm going to focus it in the center where I do get quite oily. It's kind of fun. I tried most of the products on the list this year, so I'll be able to give you my opinion on most things listed, but I do find that a lot of them didn't come out this year or they're repeats from last year, which kind of confused me. Like upcoming, the foundation, the Westman Atelier is still up on this list. They also had the Hourglass Veil Hydrating Skin Tint for their light coverage foundation and for their best full coverage liquid foundation, the award was given to Makeup by Mario. I'm going to be using the Makeup by Mario one today. This has been in my rotation heavily throughout the year. I think this is a really stunning foundation, especially if you like kind of a very glowy look because it does have like a pearlescence in here. So it does have a built-in glow booster and I think it looks really pretty. And I'm going to be using the shade 5N. Which I hope matches me. And I'm blending this out using my BK Beauty 101 brush. If my energy seems a little bit low in this video is because it is. I did something social for like a week straight every day and I am not built for that. No, no, no. I discovered that a few times this year and I just feel so tired. I can't wait to have like a slow, cozy self-care night later. But yeah, I discovered that on my trip in Greece, there's one day where my body just hit a wall. <laughs> it's like, you're gonna be sick if you continue. And I slept for 24 hours. That's what I feel like I could do right now. Introverts unite. <laughs> I can't, I'm not built for that kind of life. So moving on to concealer, this is when I started to have a side eye, okay? They have three listed. So the best light coverage concealer went to the Tarte Shape Tape Radiant Concealer. I have not tried that one. I kind of became disinterested in Tarte over the last few years. There hasn't been really much that grabbed my attention. So I don't have that one, unfortunately. The best medium coverage concealer went to this one here, the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue Brightening Concealer with SPF 25. And the best full coverage concealer went to this one, which I was like, what? because I absolutely hate this one. <laughs> it's the Bobbi Brown Skin Full Cover Concealer. This is like my arch nemesis of concealers. I recently used this in a video retrying products I hated. So if you wanna see that one under my eyes, I don't think I'm going to ever put this under my eyes again, but it's just, it's just not it for me. It's way too heavy, it creases exponentially. Um, it's just not good. And also I feel like the applicator kind of makes me uncomfortable. At first it looked like a little petal full of product, but a lot of you said it resembles a coochie. And I can only see that now, which I have no problem with, like fine, but like, I don't know, it just, uh, it's just a lot <laughs> for me. It just adds way too much under your eyes for a full coverage concealer because you only need a touch of it. And this just adds a huge glob and it just, 
is a mess, okay? So I'm going to be going in with this one. This is one that I kind of forgot about in my collection, so I'm excited to retry it. I have the shade Fair Vanilla. The texture is kind of weird. It looks like moussey and kind of chalky. It has like a grainy texture to it, but I believe it melts. You can see, hopefully on my palette here, that kind of grainy look. Or maybe mine's just expired. We'll see. Ooh, that actually looks nice from afar. I haven't looked at it up close yet, but nice and brightening. It's a little bit grainy and it looks like it may be... Ooh, I actually don't know because yesterday I filmed a bunch of concealer swatches for an upcoming video. So my under eyes might be dry because I went too far with them. I should have separated my swatches a little bit more throughout a couple days, but it's looking a little separated on my under eyes, but I'm not sure if it's dry. I didn't look at my under eyes this morning. Can you see that? It's, it's quite evident right here. It looks like it's worsening actually. It may just not be a good fit with the other base products I used. It's just kind of sitting on top there. It looks like it's going to separate on me. I think we should involve the powder quite quickly here. So they have a few options for setting powders. The best pressed one went to the Lawless Beauty Perfecting Powder Talc Free Skin Smoothing Powder and the best loose powder, which I prefer loose over pressed. And it went to the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder in Ultra Blur. And I have that one. So I'm going to test this and I'm going to apply this using a Huda Beauty Powder Puff. Yeah, I have a feeling it's like my actual under eyes that are dry. It's becoming more evident with this powder. I'll see how this is on my forehead. It's just the condition of my under eyes isn't great today. Now let's move on to the bronzer and contour winners. So for their best powder bronzer, they gave it to the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil Natural Chocolate Cocoa Infused Healthy Glow Bronzer. I don't really use Too Faced, so I don't have this product on hand, but I have all the other options in front of me. For their best powder bronzer, I think they made a mistake here. For their best cream bronzer, they gave it to the NARS Laguna Bronzing Cream, which I have in front of me here. For their best contour stick, they gave it to the Milk Makeup Contour Stick. For their best contour wand, it was the Halo Glow Beauty Wands from e.l.f., which I picked up for this video. I'm very excited to have these now. They took a while to get to Canada, then I kind of forgot about them, but today's the day we're going to be trying these. And for their best contour palette, they mentioned the Patrick Ta palette, which I adore and I recently used on my channel, but I'm very excited to try these out finally. I picked up the shades Fair Light and Light Medium. So let's try this one first. I'm gonna swatch both shades actually. I also picked up the highlighter and blush versions for an upcoming drugstore video, so keep tuned for that, but. Ooh, that looks like a really nice color actually. This is Light Medium, which I would definitely use to bronze. And here is Fair Light which is the perfect contour. I might use both colors today. I'm gonna to start with the more bronzy shade, light medium, and then I'll add more depth with the other. Ooh, very nice. I really like that tone. Very easy to blend to. And I think I went in with the perfect amount. So now I'm going to take that shadowy color and just put it right here. Cause this is where I want more cheek pop. I need some lip balm. I'm just going to throw on some of this Rode peptide lip treatment, which I'm surprised isn't on this list. I feel like I see these everywhere. They're actually pretty good too. <laughs> This is the salted caramel one, and it tastes and smells so nice. These are great. These are really great. I'm sad they fell off my, my radar so quickly. I wish I picked them up earlier. Really nice. Now for my favorite section, blush. Although I'm not very fond of all the blushes here. I mean, there are some good ones. There's some classics here, but they feel a little bit random to me. So these were the winners 
for the best powder blushes. This is the Armani Luminous Silk Glow Blushes. I wasn't a fan of these. I found them to be quite sticky for powder blushes. Like they didn't glide on really nicely. They just kind of adhered in one spot and they would refuse to blend out from there. Maybe it's the two shades I have. I have the shades 51 right here and 60. These ones. For their best cream blush compact, they picked the Danessa Marks Beauty Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Powder Blushes. I liked the formula of these. I wasn't keen on the actual tones. They all really turned orange on me. I filmed a shorts swatching all of them on my cheeks, so you can check that out on my page. I like the formula. It feels really nice and powdery, yet balmy, but I think the tones that they launched would suit uh, medium to darker skin tones, which is no problem at all. They just weren't up my alley, which is fine. For their best cream blush tube, Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Matte Beauty Blush Wands, which are cute. I find these to be cute, but they're not as good as the Glowgasm ones. I feel like that just has a little bit of uniqueness, whereas these are nice, good formula, nice pigmentation. I just feel like they don't have a unique twist to them, but I still have them and I like them. And for their best liquid blush, it went to the M Cosmetics Serum Blushes, which I found kind of random because these are quite old to the beauty community now. What shade should I use? I'm just trying to keep in mind the other shades that are going to be going on my eyes and lips later in the video. So I think these are going to be best suited for whatever look I come up with later. <laughs> This is the range of tones. I'm trying to decide between Pillow Talk and Pink Pop. But yeah, Pillow Talk, Peach Pop, Dream Pop, and Pink Pop. I wore this shade a lot in the summertime. It's a really nice muted red. So I like that one, um, but I might go in with Pink Pop today. I feel like it'll be the most subdued because I feel like we're gonna do something pretty colorful on the eyes. This might just be a little bit brown for everything else. So let's do this one. I wanted this one to look bubblegum pink on my skin tone, but it looks pretty peach on me. I think that's just undertone things. And I'm just blending this out quickly using my Rose Ink number no. three brush. Now it's time to highlight, they have two. So their best liquid highlighter is the Jones Road Shimmer Face Oil, which I haven't tried. I didn't even know that that was a product. I'm interested to try that, but I don't have it on hand for today's video, but I do have their favorite powder option, which was none other but the Rare Beauty Positive Light Silky Touch Highlighter. This is one of my top favorite products of the year. I've used it nonstop, and it's such a stunning formula. They have four shades. I just quickly swatched them here. So this is the shade Mesmerize, which has a really pretty like pink tone to it. This one's my favorite though, the shade Exhilarate. It's a really stunning champagne gold. Then we have Enlighten, which is a nice stark white highlight, and Flaunt, which is a nice kind of bronzy golden shade. Here are the undertones, you can see them a little bit more clearly here, but they have such a stunning glow. They're named perfectly because they have such a gorgeous silky touch. They feel unlike any other highlighter I've tried. They feel dry but at the same time hydrated and they give such a unique glow to your cheeks. They're very intense but they also have like a really subtlety to them. Like they're not super texture enhancing but they just add an amazing highlight. I can't stop raving about these. I think the pinky one might be cute with today's cheek look. So I'm going to go in with the shade Mesmerize with my Moda Pro Glow brush. And you only need a little bit and I really like to take the time to polish it into my skin meaning like I really do these intense circles until the pearls are melted into my base. I just love how they disappear when you're head on and when you turn to the side, it's like, wha bam They're gorgeous. It's like the best of a 2015 highlight, but with 2023 technology. <laughs> That's how I describe them. They're so cute. Now I'm going to take a little bit more of that Ultra Blur setting powder from Laura Mercier. Whoa, it took way too much. Holy moly. And I'm going to set the center of my face using this BK Beauty 104 brush. I feel like this powder is okay. It's just not as dramatically blurring as some others that I really enjoy, like the Jones Road one or the Huda one, but it's still, it's fine, I guess. It's just not as blurring as I would expect from the name of the powder. 
I do prefer the other two that I mentioned over this one, but it's not bad, it's not bad. And for setting sprays, they had a matte version and a glowy version. For their matte one, it went to the Milk Makeup Pore Eclipse Setting Spray, which I actually have fallen in love with this year. It's really, really good and really fun to work with because it will set your makeup in, it'll make everything look like one, but it still looks matte. Like it doesn't add a glow whatsoever. It also has a beautiful atomizer. 10 on 10. And their glowy version is the Urban Decay All Nighter Extra Glow Setting Spray, which I haven't tried. I didn't even know they had a super glowy version. So, but I'm gonna go with this one. I feel like it'll suit the kind of vibe of the skin better today. We've been using a lot of matte products. It's an extraordinary mattifying setting spray. Like it does the job really well and it doesn't make your skin feel like you sprayed it with hairspray, which is something I found with a lot of other mattifying setting sprays, but this one's really, really nice. So now it's time for brows. What do they have here? Okay, so their best brow pencil went to the Kosas Brow Pop Nano, which I can agree is really, really nice. It just really depends on what your brows need. This is super, super, super tiny. I only whip this out when I have freshly tinted brows like I do today because it fills in the sparser areas perfectly. But if you have a lot of filling to do, this is not a great option. You'll run through it way too quickly. But this is another option if you like to draw on brow hairs, like brow-like brow strokes. I can't talk when I do my brows. That's why I do brow intermissions. I think I used the wrong color today, but I'm using soft brown. I guess it's fine because my brows got a little darker than I meant to, but that's okay. I really like this formula too. It's quite hard and waxy it's not too soft so it will help with the longevity like in your brows and for the life of the pencil okay i'm just going to prime my eyes so while i'm off doing that please enjoy the intermission Moving on to eyes, there are so many products, you guys. I got overwhelmed this morning. I tried to practice some looks, and while well, I took some photos, you'll see them, yeah. Didn't really go well. I don't have a plan. <laughs> okay, for this section, instead of going by category by category, I feel like I should just do a whole tour of what I have for today so I don't get lost in the sauce. Okay. So starting with eyeliners, I actually disagree with a lot of their eyeliner choices. I just have two of the options here, but I've tried most of them. So for their best waterproof long lasting eyeliner, they went with the Kulfi or Kulfi, I'm not sure how to pronounce that brand, their best color pencil liners. I actually picked this up for last year's Allure video and I didn't like these. I found that they were a little bit sticky to work with and they faded in my waterline really quickly, which is what they're made for. So I didn't repurchase that pencil for this video. For their best liquid liner, they went with the Lancome Ultra Precise Felt Tip Waterproof Liquid Liner. I prefer brush tips when it comes to eyeliners and I found this one to have like a shiny latexy look when it dried down, so I forego to repurchase that one too. I do have this one. This is the Danessa Myrex Best Waterproof Liquid Liner. It's the Linework Paint Brush Liner, which sounds really nice to me. I like waterproof liquid liners. They're also brush tips. So. That's awesome. They also have, for their best bright colored liquid liner, they went with the Urban Decay 24-7 inks, which I really, really like. They also have some neutral colors too, but their colored ones are really awesome to work with. They also have some really unique shimmer ones. So I'm gonna try to incorporate those today. These are really fun. For their best black and brown gel liner, they went with the Revlon Colorstay Micro Hyper Precision Gel Eyeliner. I found it to be way too small to work with, and it really tickled my waterline, so I got rid of those a long time ago. And I have not tried the best color gel liners that they picked here, the L'Oreal Paris Infallible Grip Mechanical Gel Liner. Haven't tried those. I'll have to pick those up though. Now moving on to the eyeshadow palettes. They have the Florisys Floral Engraving Phoenix Makeup Palette in Retro Brown. I have a version of this eyeshadow palette. There's three different colorways. I have this one here which has a lot more fun colors. I'm going to try to use this today. I haven't used it yet. I've only really swatched it. Well, I guess I used it this morning when I tried. When I tried, when I attempted, I just got a flashback. <laughs> I was 
looks I did this morning. I just got horrified. Um, <laughs> and they also had these, which I haven't tried yet. I might forego using these today and I might use these in an upcoming drugstore video, but these are the Maybelline New York Shadow Blocks, which are really cute concepts. And for the last little eyeshadow palette, they chose these, which I highly dislike. These are the Rose Ink Satin and Shimmer Duo eyeshadows. I don't like them. This was also featured and this was also featured in that retrying makeup I hated video. So I won't be using that. Puts me in a bad mood. Okay. <laughs> and for eyeshadow sticks, they have two options. They have the about face shadow sticks for their bright options. I do like these. I like their matte liquid eyeshadows a lot better, but the shimmers in this collection are really nice. And this was in the Allure list last year too. I picked these up for that specific video. These are the Bobbi Brown long wear cream eyeshadow sticks. So I found that that was interesting that they're repeated again. I feel like there's a lot of repeats this year. And for their best liquid shimmers, they went with the Half Magic Beauty Chrome Addiction shimmers, which I completely agree on. These are amazing, amazing products and the colors are stunning. So as you can see, I have a lot to work with. I'm going to try my best to come up with something really cool while using most of these things, okay? I'm gonna attempt. I'm trying so hard to not get overwhelmed, but that's when things get crazy. So I'm going to start with one of the About Face shadow sticks. I swatched the four shades that I have. This is Lotus Leaf. The blue one is 2002. This Chartreuse, which I find is a little bit more Chart than Truce. <laughs> it's a little bit sheer. You know what I mean? It's a little bit baby poop, but um, it's the shade Aliens Are Real. And finally, the white one is Oxide, which is a really great option to have if you want to enhance some eyeshadows. This will give a good grip, so I might use that later. But my initial idea is to put this in my inner corner, kind of as like a, a swoop right here. I'm just gonna do it. And this might be really pretty to overlay one of the half magic beauty shimmers on top too, because that's not giving what I was hoping. Now dipping into the Soaring Sunlight palette from Florisys. There's so many pretty colors in this. I'm always so drawn to these type of shadows, but maybe this darker navy blue would also be a sleigh. Okay, I think I have kind of a concept. Let's see if it comes to fruition. So I'm going to start off with this matte kind of purple over here. And I'm taking it on a BK Beauty 202. And I'm going to fluff this into my crease. I think this will be pretty if I decide to go in with the blue or that kind of pinky, violety, shifty color. This might be pretty all over the lid. I actually really like that color. Sometimes these shades can look a little bruised-like, but this one's pinky enough that it's not giving bruise. I'm going to try to really build that up. I'm taking a dense brush. <sighs> That's one thing about Florisys, like their mattes aren't super deep. That's the thing with most um, Asian beauty eyeshadow palettes. They're kind of more like a soft wash of color. Sometimes I just want to amp them up, but that's just not what they're made for. So now I'm thinking of incorporating that navy blue and the shade together. So I'm going to take this purpley pink violety shift shuller color <laughs> and I'm going to put this one all over my lid. Damn, I wish I did my eyes first. I'm getting a little bit of fallout. In that case, I'm going to take some of my setting spray with a more densely packed brush. This is a Smith 253, and I'm going to grab that same color just so I get more of like a paste, and I want it to be quite intense. I love these kind of colors. It reminds me so much of that Huda Beauty palette I love so much, the rose quartz, so pretty. Ooh, it's kind of giving ethereal. So now I'm going to incorporate one of these Half Magic Beauty colors. I'm thinking either Baby Bunny or Fairies Are Real. I think Fairies Are Real because we have a lot of other pinks going on. Fairies Are Real has a really nice blue shift, but it also has some violety hues too. It has some pink sparkles in there, so I think it will look good. I'm just going to put a touch here and I'm going to blend it out. I love liquid shimmers. I feel like they're so much more controllable. You don't get fallout and they set down and they're most likely going to stay there all day because they have that good grippy base. These are so nice. Definitely on my list of favorites from this year too. And I think 
I'm going to put a little bit of this pretty champagne-y silvery white shade. It has a little bit of warmth, but a lot of cool. At the same time, it's really interesting. And I'm going to put that right in the inner part. And I'm hoping it will catch on to the half magic a little bit to intensify that. Yeah. Oh my God, this is so much better than any of the ideas I had this morning. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> now let's see if I can incorporate some of these liners. I'm going to line on top with my Danessa Myricks one. This is in the shade Onyx. I've never used this. Oh, it's super juicy. Oh, it's like leaking. Okay, I think I had stored this upside down, so that might have been my fault, but I do like to see that instead of dry, so that's good. The brush tip is a little bit big for my liking, but I think I can, I can grab a hold of it. Oh, it's very liquidy. It's so liquidy that it's um, spreading and bleeding into my fine lines on my eyes. I, putting that away. <laughs> I'm going to use the black one from the Urban Decay inks instead. That's, just, I know that's going to mess things up for me. Can you see the bleeding? And I wiped off most of the product too. Okay, that's too bad. I'm just going to take a little bit of my concealer to clean this up. Okay, that became a little thicker than I wanted, but I might roll with it because I have this shimmery ink liner from Urban Decay. Just swatched it right here. This is the shade High Energy, and I might attempt to fade this section here with the shimmery one. Let's see if that works. And what's interesting about these liners from Urban Decay, some of them are brush tips, some of them are felt tips. It just depends on the formula. The ones with shimmer are brushes. The black one was brushes, but some of like these more neon shades are felt tips, like the lighter ones are. Okay, and with that same brush, I'm going to grab some of that navy from the Florisys palette, and I'm going to overlay that just to kind of soften it maybe to say we concluded it more so. And then I'm going to wrap this shade around here. I think that might be kind of pretty. That effortlessly ombre itself. That was very satisfying to see. And then I feel like maybe I should incorporate the pink liquid one from Half Magic Beauty and Baby Bunny right here. Okay, I think that turned out really, really pretty. I'm going to do the same on this eye and I'll be right back. So this eye turned out beautiful. I love how ethereal yet dramatic it turned out to be. Honestly, doing this little swoop in the inner corner saved it all. I feel like it made this quite basic look look a little bit more upscaled and unique. The shimmers are playing together beautifully. But now it's time to move on to mascara, and I only have one set of eyes, so I'm going to be using one, but they have an award winner for any type you like. Waterproof, volumizing, lengthening, big drama lashes, best tubing, colored mascara, all of it. But the one I was most interested in trying out was the Lashgate one, which is the L'Oreal Paris Telescopic Lift. I haven't tried this one yet. I'm very late on this too, but we all know it. And a lot of people love it too, so I'm excited to try it out for myself. <laughs> but let's try it out. It has a very interesting wand. It kind of looks like a paddle. It's flat. This side has no bristles. It's just like a little paddle with product. And the other side looks like a little hedgehog. It has like the plastic key bristles. So let's try it out. I curled my lashes already. I'm going with the paddle side first, kind of scoop on the mascara. And I'm going to flip it over and comb through. I don't think this is going to be my Clio mascara because I don't know if there ever will be at this point be a better mascara than that one for me and my preferences, but it's fun to try out some other ones, right? I don't feel confident with this type of wand at all. Mm. I don't think it's a fit for my lash type. I have like a lot of lashes, but they're fine. So they tend to fall. So this mascara seems to be a little heavy for my lash type. They have just fallen. Like there's no curl left in them whatsoever. I need a lightweight formula 
that's going to like lift them up like a good push-up bra. Oh my god, you guys, I have such an embarrassing story. I don't think I have time to talk about it today, but keep me accountable. I want to say it because I think it's really funny and horrifying at the same time. Um, yeah, okay, I don't like that mascara at all. Look at what it did. That's stinky. <laughs> okay, there's actually quite a few fails for me today. One being this Denessa Myricks liner. I forgot to, I just kind of breezed right past it. I got a little scared. I needed to work at my liner fast, but yeah, I don't know what it is with the Nessa Myers products this year. They just have not been working out. They either have like this weird plasticky fuzzy stuff on it, like the groundwork palette I got. Um, I don't know what was on it, but I see a lot of people having that issue. I DM them. Oh, I just wanted to follow up because I did say I was going to DM them. I did, they saw it and they left me on red. So I don't know the situation. I'm not going to be using that palette on my eyes though. Yeah, all the Danessa Meg's products I tried this year have not worked for me, which is so sad because they do have so many bangers and I love them to bits, but it just hasn't been the year for me and their products, I guess, I, but that's okay. That's okay, totally. I've just had issues with them. But yeah, here are the eyes all done. I am surprised by the lashes that they picked for their falsies. Uh, they went for their dramatic lashes. They went with the Kiss Lashes, the Muses. I got those and they're so big and I don't like the other pairs either. I'm really surprised that they don't have Falscara on here or Lashify or anything like that. I feel like that really had a moment this year. The only individual lashes that they have are from uh, Pro Lash Classic Lux Wispy Lashes. Never heard of them and they're super expensive so I didn't go with them. So I'm gonna leave it at that for the eyes. But now let's move on to the lips. Their lip choices really disappointed me this year. I feel like a lot of them seem random to me. They're either older formulas or formulas I just did not get along with. I mean, they do have a few bangers. Like they included the Clinique Black Honey, which I believe was in the previous year as well. This had a huge year. So I do get why this one is on the list. It is a stunning flattering lip color. I think this would actually be pretty cute with this look, but let's talk about the other options first. For their lip balm, like I mentioned, I'm surprised these didn't win, but these made another comeback, the Summer Fridays lip balms. I really like the vanilla one, but the tinted ones, the ones that I've tried anyways, taste really weird to me and I can't get down with that, especially if it's just on my lips all day. Yeah, I just found that their lip selections were odd but let's try the ones that I have. So this one seemed random to me. For their best matte liquid lipstick, it went to the MAC Locked Kissed Ink Liquid Lip Colors. I only have one shade. This is the shade Sardonic. It's an intense dark purple. I'm gonna try it out again. This morning, I could not get it to work for me, but I'm determined because I feel like it could look really cool. I could potentially make this work with a lip liner, but this specific color is quite streaky and not opaque enough. The texture feels okay. It feels kind of like a drier matte feel. It's very, very thin. That color is really cool, but once it dries down, you can just see the streakiness and the patchiness of it all. This is one of the colors I tried on this morning when I was practicing looks, and it was extremely sticky as well, so I don't get this choice. Maybe the other shades are better, but from what I see with this one, I don't get it at all. I feel like MAC has much stronger lip formulas. Like for example, this formula, the Retro Matte Liquid Lip Colors. I feel like this is a much better formula than this one. This is where I knew they had weird lip picks. They also included the Makeup by Mario Moisture Glow Pumping Lip Color. Not these ones here, but the liquid lip colors that they brought out earlier. Those are some of the worst lip products I've ever tried. The shades that I purchased really separated on me, settled into my fine lines of my lips and just looked terrible. There's just a lot here that I disagree with, which is funny. Maybe people love them and I'm the odd man out, but I just, I didn't get it. So now that this lipstick is dry, you can see the cracks. And look at that stickiness. It honestly feels like I rubbed the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer all over my lips. Like I could use that instead of taping my mouth at night so I don't mouth breathe. <laughs> no, for real, like I could. Like that's crazy. <laughs> that's insane. That's insane. I didn't know it was that bad. There are some that I like, like the Clinique one. Love the almost lipstick in Black Honey. So good. I also love the Clarins lip oil. Doing this video last year actually introduced me 
to the lip oils from Clarins. And so that was a win for me, but it is a repeat from last year. So I found that funny. And they also included this, the Fenty Beauty Gloss Balm in Ice. So I might go in with this one. But yeah, it's kind of like the more boring option. This lip plumper is actually nice. It's a little sticky. I'm just gonna take some off, but it does work. It feels really nice and cooling. It's like more of a minty cooling than the other uh, lip plumpers that Fenty offers. Those other ones, they kind of smell like tobacco to me, but this one just is more up my alley. It's minty, it's cooling, it feels a little tingly. It's kind of nice. But yeah, definitely the more boring option of today's video. I might leave it without a lip liner. I think that actually looks kind of cute. It gives kind of a softer look with the more ethereal eyes. I think that's cute. I should forego lip liners more often. I'm actually just wiping off a little bit of the center and I'm going to add black honey right in the center. And I think it'll be a good match with that shade we used on the outer corner, like that matte shadow. I think that's kind of cute. I was like, that's a little bit too boring. Can't end with that. Okay. But here is the final makeup look. I feel like I can agree with most of their picks. I'll go through the ones that I disagree. For the powder blushes, I feel like they could have picked something a lot better. There has been so many better launches and this formula just feels kind of mid for me. Again, this is the Armani Luminous Silk Glow Blushes. They're okay. I feel like there's a lot more innovative ones or ones that just perform a lot better. I just have a random pile here. It's not gonna go in order. Really disagree with them on the Rose Ink Eye Duos. The cream has a good formula. It's the pigment inside that makes it look really patchy and this specific color looks really, really bruisey. The shimmer is really nice, but it completely disappears. It either gets absorbed by my skin or it just flakes off. I don't know where it goes, but it should be on my eyes. Don't agree with them with that. Same with this concealer from Bobbi Brown. It's actually horrid. <laughs> I'm not huge on this one either. I'm going to give it may a maybe because I did keep it in my collection and my under eyes are just very dry today. So I'm going to keep it to try out again, but it's, it isn't my favorite. I don't love that grainy texture it has, but it does do a good job at brightening. So this is one that has potential. I'm just going to revisit it another day. For the Laura Mercier Ultra Blur Powder, I feel like there are better blurring loose powders out there. This one just felt a little mid to me as well, unfortunately. It does do the job. It sets my skin. It feels nice and like silky, but it doesn't look as refined as others. If you want a super airbrushed look, this isn't the one for you. For the eyeshadow sticks, I feel like there are, I really hope this wasn't an accurate representation of how this brush eyeliner works. Maybe mine is just way too juicy and it just applied way too much, but it feels really thin, but it immediately settled and bled into all my little fine lines I wasn't aware about immediately. So this was a bad first impression. I really don't get the hype of this mascara. I see why she added false lashes now. <laughs> it just does not go with my specific lash type. I've seen it look amazing on some people, but not me. <laughs> and this was just like, what the heck? If you want an alternative to mouth tape, try this shade from MAC. But otherwise, I feel like there's going to be quite a few of these in my favorites of 2023. So keep tuned for that, but it'll be a few months. They'll probably be in December. But I said all the things, so that's going to be all from me. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and found it entertaining. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. I will list and link everything down below in the description. So feel free to check that out and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.